Hello Internet, I'm back, and this time it's with a Nintendo Zapper that I've debogitated a USB cable and a programming header into. USB cable? Very useful. Programming header? Not. However, this USB cable now links this gun to a computer. The gun? Unlike the normal gun, which detects a 15 kilohertz uh, sync wave on top of a CRT monitor, so it would be completely useless against uh, most modern televisions, this one has a CR999 photo sensor. This photo sensor can tell color. So now, we now have a color gun. A color Nintendo Zapper gun. You might ask why. Well, it all started when... Hey Charles! I had an idea. Okay, so what if you made a shooter that was also a rhythm game? How? I don't know. We may not have known how, but we knew somebody who would. He was Eric Holnicker. He runs Save Point, a retro gaming store in Westminster, Maryland. Hello, sir. Can I help you today? I have an idea. Go on. How about this Namco GunCon for the PlayStation video game computer entertainment system machine? How about a Nintendo 64? So, uh, if you tear one of these open, it's actually really basic. I've already unscrewed it here for you. Um, really, all it is is just the uh, the shell and uh, the circuit board in here that has a, uh, a photo uh, diode on it that's actually susceptible only to a very specific frequency um, so that you can only use it with a TV. Ingenious, and yet really annoying. Um, so I'm going to have to replace this with uh, something else. And uh, I'm going to kind of go through that a little bit. Uh, so, we'll see how it goes. What I have here is the uh, electronics from the device kind of broken out. You can see that it's a very specialty shaped circuit board having the little notches in specific locations to fit. So I just took a pair of calipers and measured all the little segments out and uh, decided to uh, lay this out in Express uh, PCB. So what I did first was produce this board. As you can see, it's just a rough draft. Um, there's lots of problems with it. I tried using a flexible flat circuit board to store the, the graphical component. Did not work. So I redesigned the board, and this is the redesign right here. And so now I have a long tray with I2C on it, so I can put um, multiple I2C devices if I want, and I still have a USB on the back. The first device I have here is the magnetometer, and this I'm going to be using in order to tell which way you're shooting. This is a feature that the original one did not have, so I hope to take advantage of it. This is the next device. It's the um, the carrier for the uh, photo device, and uh, this thing was much more difficult to solder than I expected. I tried doing it on a flexible flat circuit board because I've done that on a couple things before. It did not pan out, so I'm going to try it again on this hard circuit board. There we go. Here's another close-up of the part. What I'm going to do now is just kind of push the solder around so it's just underneath the chip. This helps uh, maintain any other uh, contacts that have not been uh, quite connected yet. I have these two side by side here and the goal is to get the uh, the photo part lined up with the other photo part so that it will be in focus in the final product. So the way I'm going to do that is mark off on the, uh, the track here where exactly that other LED falls. So it's about right here if I can get some solder on it. And as you can see what I've done is uh, kind of gotten the solder where I want the other part to go. And it's going to be just in front because this part mounts like that. Now that I have that marked off, what I can do is just sit here, mount this just about where it needs to be, and then melt some of the solder so that these two pads here will uh, simply stick together. So if I just line it up, apply some solder, then this thing is now freestanding on the, the board. Uh, so now what I can do is apply this right inside of the uh, the gun here. Whoops, upside down. 
And the idea is that it's pointed forward and it fits right into the little groove, just like that. This makes it so that it fits snugly and it won't really rattle around too much when the corresponding grooves on the other side come down on top of it. So I'm going to just do that right now. Ooh, come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. And it just fits together all nice and snug without any, whoa, any trouble at all. No gap, no nothing. You can see down the barrel there, at the end of it is the photodiode. The idea is that as you go away, it still appears to remain the same size, so it'll make a spot on the photodiode wherever you're aiming. So here, I have the gun opened up completely. The main chamber here doesn't really have any black around it, and you can actually, it's somewhat translucent, so I'm going to have to spray paint that black in order to prevent any extra light from coming in. To do that though, I'm going to have to remove all of the really important components here, which really the lens and the switch are the only two that I can think of. The next step before we spray paint the guns is to apply masking tape. So the idea is that we want to mask off everything that we don't want to have any uh, paint on. And that's really the outside of the gun. I want to maintain the orange color. I've used masking tape in order to cover the outside of these guns. I've been very careful to cover all of the outside of the guns. The inside doesn't really matter as much. I'm just going for a 90% solution. And then what I'm going to do is take some spray paint. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to work. I just uh, got some of this plastic spray paint. And we'll see how well it adheres to the plastic. I'll take it. Take it. And I'm uh, going to give this a shot here. The inside doesn't have to be very good since nobody's going to see it. It just has to block light. I'm going to go let it dry. Some of because I'm using USB and we already have a cable coming out of the gun. While I can't use the existing cable for anything effectively, what I can use is I can use this USB cable and run that up into the gun. So before I solder all the wires on, I can just simply run it on through and then solder them down. Now we have it all assembled, we have the USB connected, and we have all the uh, boards in, and the programming header on. What I did not show you is that I spent about four hours trying to fiddle around with this magnetometer before I finally found out you can't scan the I2C bus in order to find it. In fact, if you do, it will basically not listen to you until you power off and back on. So, after I found that out, it was pretty much straightforward, wrote a little USB HID driver. This time I'm mapping it as a joystick with 11 axes. Three for the up, down, left, right from the accelerometer. Three from the magnetometer. One from the uh, temperature on the magnetometer. And then four more from the, uh, the light sensor. So I'm going to make and program it. Still using the little trusty uh, tiny ISP programmer. Well, I didn't do too great of a job, but as you can see, that it's probably going to be good enough, especially considering most of the rough areas are going to be covered by the, uh, the gray material on the outside. Next, I guess I'm going to have to add in all the components. Now I'm going to insert the parts, and I'm just going to run the, uh, the wire around. So first I'm going to put in the uh, trigger here. Then I'm going to try to make a little bit of room and drop in the actual sensor. Bring up the little spacer, drop it in, and then we're basically ready to, to rock and roll. Let's get the top on and we'll be done. This is the final gun right here, uh, all opened up. You can see that the inside is now completely painted black. You can see right over here the, the photo sensor and the accelerometer and the rest of the guts. Still connected up with the original plug and the USB cable coming out the bottom. I now have a completed Nintendo Zapper here, except not really at all. And uh, I have on my computer here, JS test uh, with the three values open, the red, the green, and the blue right here. And as you can see, or maybe able to see, the red goes from about 97 on up to about 350 when I go over red. Green goes from about 100 and, well, about 136 on up to about 340. 
and blue goes from about 117 on up to 238. So it's working pretty well. I can even stand back over here and it still has very similar results. And actually uh, the blue is slightly more pronounced. Uh, actually, so, is, so are all three channels. So I guess that means it's focusing really well. Here I am with the finished gun, and I'm up here back at Save Point where they originally uh, gave me the gun in the first place, and I'm at their land wall. Right in front of me is this nice plasma television, and I have the gun hooked up to a laptop out of view. This gun, now being able to tell color, I can aim it at the screen, and it can tell the different colors apart. Of course, it has to train on this particular monitor because different monitors have different kind of response functions. Once it's trained, however, though, I can click the button and it now knows, okay, yes, everything's ready to go. And I've written a video game for this gun, and uh, what it does is just kind of have a bunch of squares that show up, and you gotta hit them, and it's like B-Mania or 2DX, or a little more like amplitude or frequency, and when you hit the note, it makes the, the track go, and you can clear entire tracks. So, I'm gonna go give this game a shot. I'm gonna aim for the red ones first, which has this kind of like low, bassy sound. And I've cleared red. Now I'm going for blue, which is kind of the, the background roads. Green the lead. Now yellow. The drums. Now I've cleared all the tracks, I'm good. I can also go reverse a little bit because of the accelerometer. And my combo has worn up. Now a new note has appeared, track number five, Cyan, but I gotta clear out the blue track first. That's the end of the song. La 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 la